Okay, I'm back one final time on this issue about that 47 appearing on my output display during the third micro instruction of the add instruction cycle. And I mentioned at the end of the last video, which was the third video on this topic, that I felt like I had come up with a, you know, semi workable workaround that clearly wasn't a solution, but was working well enough that um, the 47 wasn't coming out to the output display. And um, I said I wouldn't make any more videos on the topic unless I came across something worthwhile. And um, I did come across something worthwhile. A user by the name of, uh, it's, it's not really a pronounceable username, so I'll just call him Artie, posted a comment on my second video and he said, the uh, problem is that the 74LS273 is triggered on the rising edge of its clock pulse, and when we AND the main clock with the enable signal, then any time the enable signal goes high, while the clock is high, the 273 gets a rising edge on its clock in, and it grabs what is on the bus. Then he goes on, he says, the solution is to replace the 74LS273 in the AND gate, with two 74LS173s, which, uh, which have separate clock and enable pins. This will make the register sensitive only on the rising edge of the main clock and ignoring the glitches from the ROM as its address lines change. He mentions the other solution of keeping the enable line from, every, from ever going high is not worth trying. And he says ROM chips will never guarantee that and working out how to do that with discrete logic is going to amount to putting another register between the ROM and the output register, in which case you're better off just putting a working register in the output section. And finally, he says, I really don't know how Ben's board works. He just got really lucky in the way his ROM works and the way he programmed it. So uh, after reading the comment a couple times to make sure I fully digested what was being said and Thinking over, you know, what I had seen myself, I, I completely agree with, uh, with this guy's comment. So what I've done here this morning is I've gone through and added a separate breadboard down here, you can see. And basically, this is the, uh, the solution that he's talking about. It's the two LS74173s, which I have connected to the bus through those blue jumper wires just down there right off the very bottom of the bus. And then I have the uh, red wires there connecting to the output displays EE prom. And the way I'm making sure that the other output register is out of the equation is I've just lifted the clock pin off of the AND gate and uh, I don't know if it's it's probably not completely clear in the video and the pictures, but the uh, that clock pin is definitely not making contact. It you know again sometimes uh, that with the angles of pictures and such, it may look like it's still possibly sitting in there or making contact at the very top. But I, I assure you, it's not. It's not making contact. Okay, so. Um, all that said, I, since I now have this new register wired in, I want to show uh, what I'm seeing here. So I went ahead and put back in uh, EE Prom 2, the, the one with the labeled number on it. And this one seems, for whatever reason, especially susceptible to that high pulse coming off of uh, pin 14 or IO4 of the second EE Prom, which prompts that response on the output display to pull that uh, instruction off the bus and put it on the output display as the number 47. So I just want to show that even when I'm getting, uh, so on the oscilloscope back there I've got the trigger level set at 2 volts so it won't trigger obviously unless, uh, there, unless the clock pulse or rather I should say, unless the signal coming out of the OI is more than two volts, and it's actually 2.01. So that's definitely a logical high. 
So I've got the uh, program uh, here on the breadboard computer, the 28 plus 14, and I'm just going to step through it as I've done before. And again, noting that I'm having bounce problems with my manual pulse, which at this point is becoming one of the top irritating issues that I hope to soon solve. So uh, I'll step through the LDA quickly as before because that's never been a problem. So we're on T0, so T1, T2, T3, T4, and we're back around T0 there and I did not get a bounce. So I'll step forward to T1. And now finally, this next instruction, you know, again, the third, in, uh, the third micro instruction of the add instruction cycle is the one that causes this particular EEPROM to pulse a signal out of pin 14 or IO4 that is sufficiently high enough to trigger the AND gate and at the same time that clock pulse would normally be coming in but again I've manually lifted that pin up off the breadboard so that the AND gate can't trigger so when I pulse now, let's see what we can see both on the oscilloscope and on the output display. And uh, I realize, you know, from this camera angle, the output display isn't as clear. But uh, nevertheless, you can still see what's going on. So let's pulse the clock. So I pulse the clock one time, and you can see on the oscilloscope back there, we got a very clear uh, pulse. And again, it's... Uh, the trigger level is 2.01 volts and each vertical cell is 1.5 volts. So that pulse is actually uh, pretty close to uh, 3 volts. It's almost two vertical cells there, so it's almost a 3 volt pulse. But on the output display, it didn't change. And again, that's because this particular uh, way of handling this output register makes makes this particular problem uh, a, a non-issue. It's just essentially it's immune to whatever's going on on these EE proms. So the, uh, the bottom line really is that this output register that was built in accordance with, you know, following along with Ben's videos is, um, I, I mean, I kind of want to say it's, it's like defective by design. It seems so in my opinion anyway. Well, let's continue pulsing through the program here. Um, go ahead and I'll put the oscilloscope back in single step to see if we get any other anomalous blips coming out that shouldn't be there. So we're on T2, so that's going to be T3, T4, and now we're back around T0 of the out instruction cycle. So now we're at T1, and I believe it's this next one that gives us our logical high that we're supposed to get. Yeah. So that pulses the OI uh, signal as it's supposed to when we're getting that back there. So let me go ahead and reset. So that means on the next pulse we should have our answer on the output display. And we do. And I'm pretty sure even with the wires in the way there that still shows up clearly enough. So we'll pulse through once more here. And again, now we're down to the halt cycle, and again, and again, and now we're halted. And just to show that it's not a one-time lucky coincidence, because again, in previous videos, I've demonstrated where those glitches don't always occur. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, reset the uh, breadboard computer here. And then I will uh, step through again, but I'll just go through it more quickly. So LDA, uh, T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, and now we're back around to T0 of the add cycle and I did not get any bounces. T1, and okay, so now coming up onto the third micro instruction, this is where we're usually getting that blip, and again it's a little intermittent, but with this particular EEPROM it seems to happen uh, you know, 99 times out of 100. Yep, so I pulse the clock. Uh, we get our blip there on the oscilloscope, and again, that's uh, 1.5 per vertical division, so that's almost um, 
Actually, it's probably more like 2.75. I think I said it was about 3, but I think it's probably more like 2.75. But at any rate, you can clearly see, hopefully, that, you know, again, even with these wires in the way, that we didn't get that, you know, 47 or that instruction, whatever it happened to be, it did not come to the output display. So single, T3, I guess it is, T4, back around, T1, and now we get our logical high. There it is. And now we get the instruction appearing, or rather the answer appearing on the output display. And there it is. Pulse, 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 and we're halted. And uh, just to be completely thorough, let me uh, reset here and let the clock run without manual pulsing. So that's T0, T1. This is where we get the blip sometimes. Again, okay, so it didn't occur that time. Now we get our logical high. Answer. Okay. So that was an interesting run there because on that particular run, we uh, we didn't get the blip, or at least it wasn't above 2.01 volts. It may have just it may be the case that it was just under. But let me try that again, just out of curiosity. So go back to single step, and I'll reset here. So that's LDA, and now we're on the add cycle, and this is where we get the blip. Okay, so it did show up that time. So you can see it's very odd that it's quite intermittent. But um, again, part of that intermittent comes just from where that trigger level is set. If I lowered the trigger level on the oscilloscope, it would probably be a bit less intermittent. But I don't want to have the trigger level set so low as to be irrelevant. You know, if you set the trigger level at 100 millivolts or something, that's not going to be a logical high no matter what. So it's kind of an irrelevant point. But here, you know, again, it's set at 2.01. So that's definitely a logical high. And then one more time just to satisfy myself I guess now we're coming around to the ad cycle and this is where we get the blip yep and again it didn't affect the output display and there and there we go so that's it I, I personally consider this the actual real solution it's not a workaround it's not uh, anything that has to be explained through bizarre crosstalk on the wires or anything that has to be explained through weird zeros and ones being in the wrong place on the EE proms. All of those are interesting thoughts, but essentially, in this case at least, you know, aren't really contributing to uh, what's going on here. The, the problem is just that this design, this using this LS, uh, using the 74 LS 273, it is just, it, it does not seem to be the correct way to build this circuit and um, using these two uh, 74LS uh, 173s which we've used throughout the breadboard otherwise seems like the correct way to build this circuit and um, in fact it's actually I, I, I wish I had done it this way in the first place because it would have been easier to build this circuit using these now it is going to be a bit of a chore to have to go through and kind of tear out these wires uh, and replace everything, but it's clearly, it's something that's well worth doing. So that is it. That is the finale. And I have uh, reached the conclusion on this issue. And I am, uh, I, I, the, the phraseology that I use is that it's been solved to my complete satisfaction.